Good mid-afternoon on this Friday. Beautiful day. The sun is shining. I pray that you guys are doing well. Um, of course, this is your boy, Sean, the intercessor on both um, TikTok and on YouTube. I decided to come on here to share a few scriptures with you concerning a place um, called hell. Not saying that the Spirit of the Lord told me to do this, but I just felt the need to do this. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this person, but um, I forgot his name because I just got finished watching his video. But um, this uh, this um, author who wrote the book, 23 Days in Hell, I was watching um, basically his experience in hell for 23 minutes and all the things that the Lord showed him and the scriptures that he was giving and just different things and of course, when he was praying the prayer of salvation for those that were at the church and even for those online, of course, I prayed the prayer of salvation for myself, but I'm coming on here to deter those that may have, you know, planned on, you know, making hell their eternity, even to those that support hell, you know, are high priest in hell. Um, or are witches, warlocks in hell, those that serve the devil. Um, just wanted to come on here and deter you from those decisions because Satan hates you just like he hates Christians. You know, the devil shows no mercy, no love. He has hatred. Um, I know a lot of you may say, um, well, how can the devil hates me when he uses me? How can you say the devil hates me when I'm a, you know, a priest in hell? I'm a witch or warlock in hell. The reason why the devil hates you, because it doesn't matter. He's using you to get what he needs on this earth to be done. And the reason why the devil hates you is because at the end of the day, no matter if you are a witch, a warlock, a high priest, if you run a satanic church, you're still made in the image of God. You're just a part of the Antichrist conspiracy. There we go, conspiracy. But you're still made in the image of God. And that's why the devil don't like you. But he makes it seem like he likes you, but he really doesn't like you. But a lot of you that are in the kingdom of darkness and serving the kingdom of darkness have been deceived to think that he loves you. He does not love you. And of course, at the end of this video, I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to do a, um, salvation prayer. Amen. So these are 20 top Bible hell scriptures that we're going to, um, go through. Amen. And amen. So let's go through these. I'm going to take my time with this. We're going to start at Revelation 21 and 8. And I'm going to be coming out of, I'm just going to be reading these out of, well, I'm just going to stay in the King James Version. So Revelation 21 and 8 says, and please stay with me. I think it's Revelation 21, yeah, 21 and 8. Revelation 21 and 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Matthews 10 and 28. Says. And fear not. Them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. For rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. I'm reading these slowly because I want to read them 
too fast and mispronounce anything. Matthews 25 and 46 says... And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteousness live life internal. Let me read this caption for you. It says, there are many verses that discuss the subject of hell. For it is not a place where anyone wants to spend eternity. So... It is important for Christians to know the scriptures describing the horrible place. Now, let me stop and say this real quickly. I understand that a lot of people are scared when it comes down to the topic. Hell. A lot of people have been deemed shall I say, as a false prophet because they preach hell more than anything. That's how they deem um, Billy Graham and other people because people are looking for words that get them hype, that gets them, you know, shouting and dancing. Billy Graham, Billy Graham, excuse me, were practicing the same walk that Jesus practiced like other ones did. Because he taught kingdom of heaven talk. He taught repentance. He taught salvation. And he preached about salvation. He preached about the end times. He preached about the rapture of the church. The second coming of Jesus Christ. He preached about hell. Notice now. In the Bible when Jesus started his ministry at age 12. Jesus did the same thing. He preached hell more than he preached heaven. He preached in season, out of season. The job of the shepherd is to preach in season and out of season. It's not about the shout. It's not about the speaking in tongues. It's not about the it's not about none of that stuff. It's about preaching in season and out of season. Because you can still be bound when you come and shout your way back into being bound. You can be depressed and shout your way back into being depressed. You can be dealing with strongholds and addictions and shout your way back into dealing with strongholds and addictions. Church isn't just about shouting. Church isn't just about speaking in tongues and laying out on the floor. It's more to that. It's more to that. And it's important and imperative that you learn about hell. That you learn about heaven because you'll be amazed as to how many people who confess themselves as Christians don't believe in a place called hell or heaven. You have Satanists that don't believe in Jesus, but they believe in Satan. That makes no sense. They sit here and say that nowhere in history is there proof that there is a such thing as Jesus, that there is such thing as a resurrection, and all of that is false. And you can't say in the Bible that there's not a such thing or any proof of Jesus because that's a lie. Or God because that's a lie. Or the Holy Spirit because that is also a lie. All of that is a lie. Because I'm pretty sure in the Satanic Bible, there's mention of the Holy Trinity. So I just wanted to put that out there, but let me make this quick. Amen. So 2 Thessalonians 1 and 9 says, and I'm not going by any verses, I'm just going by off this right here. It says, they will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord. And from the glory of his might. Matthew 13 and 50 says. And throw them into the flaming furnace. Where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Acts 2 and 27 says. Because you will not abandon me. To the ram of death. 
you will not let your Holy One see decay. Mark 9 and 43 says, if you, if your hands causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. Jude 1 and 7 says, in a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual morality and perversion. They serve as a Example of those who suffer the punishment of internal fire. Proverbs 15 and 24 says, The path of life leads upward for the to keep them from going down to the realm of death. I'm about to do a part two of this video right now.